develop game, you have to understand games. There are several view, uh, several ways you can try to understand games. So we start from the alphabet. Okay. Uh, we start from the alphabet, going to see the pieces of the games. Then we are going to move uh, to the different type of pieces. Okay. So first of all, we are going to do the structure of the game. Then we are going to do, we are going to analyze these uh, elemental pieces of the games in, in a little bit more depth. Then we're going to see how you can add the dramatic elements to this, following the, the, the book from, by Fullerton. And then we're going to talk about a little about the mechanics, dynamics, and stuff like this. Okay? And these are the basics, the basics, the alphabet of what we are talking about. Okay? Uh, some of these, some of what I, I will show you, will, will appear really trivial for most of you. But actually, it's very interesting to try to. Uh, Try to make the exercise to try to uh, really delve into this. Okay, so uh, when you are talking about video games, it's uh, very interesting to to split the word uh, like they do in English actually, and to say, okay, what does, does video in video games stand for? It's basically the medium. Okay, the medium you're using. Okay, so if you are using board game, it means a basic board, and otherwise, if you mean a card game, it's a game with cards. So since game is everywhere here, okay, it should be that all the games share common, all the three types of games share common features. So <coughs> one of the first exercises you find in every game design books when they say that's the introduction, uh, step zero of game design, they let you take uh, some of the known games and they ask you to compare them, okay? So what are the similarities and the differences between, uh, uh, this is uh, Max Payne, I think, uh, Super Mario, one of the Super Mario, chess and, uh, and cards, okay? And here you can elaborate, or, uh, you can elaborate on this. Well, first of all, this one has a very definite story, okay? This one has a very definite story. Uh, this has a, a little bit uh, more fancy story, but if the story is not that important while you're playing it, uh, when, you, when you're playing, for instance, The Last of Us, the story is a major feature of the, of the thing. These don't have story, right? These don't have stories. It's actually wrong, okay? Because these have stories too. This one is a, clearly a war story, okay? The only thing is that uh, here, we remember this one because it's uh, from our times. Here, it was uh, hidden in the story. Actually, even here, there is a story. Even in the card games, there is a story. And we're going to talk to a, a, a game designer, Sparkalo Albertarelli. He's going to make a workshop on board game. And we, are trying to, we will try to learn how to make one simple board game. And the idea is that here, the different seats would represent the different classes, like the poor people, the rich people, the priest, and the military. Okay? And so there was a story underlying these cards, but we lost it. But more or less, it's there. We have pieces, we have elements. We have, uh, for instance, all these ones have players. So what are the similarities and uh, the differences? As you said, one of the things, if you try to describe to another guy uh, what is going to be playing cards, uh, one of the games of cards, you know, or playing chess, whatever you do, there's going to be a player, okay? Well, you can talk about music without the listener, okay? I can talk with the, um, about, uh, you know, the, the last, uh, the last uh, record from Nirvana, uh, without talking about, you know, the listener is the guy who's listened to the, the to the record. Okay, no, I, I don't care about that. But in the, in, a, in, a, in, a, in any game, I say, you know, the player has to do this, has to do that. The player is okay, impersonate this guy. And this is a big thing because uh, you have to convince player to, to, to be a player. Okay. You can build music and then you hope that somebody listens to that, but actually uh, the music can, uh, you can exist without any player. The game doesn't really exist without the player, so you have to convince it. And the game and the player have to accept uh, have this attitude toward the, toward the play. They all have objectives. It's really difficult to, be, uh, to build up a game uh, without objectives. Any game is an objective. That's one of the principles. And actually, it's really interesting, in a way, to eliminate, these are two of the fundamental elements, but it's very interesting to try to, to know the role of these elements, 
to try to eliminate them. So one of the games that was shown yesterday by Federico, it was basically without objectives. You know, you remember the game, you were going around in the, in the fields, and you can sound the instruments, there were things that would sound, and then you would stay there and look at the sky, okay? Uh, Federico anticipated that there was a lot of discussion about whether that was a game, actually why that was one of the disturbing things. There is nothing to do in, 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 as an objective, okay? Other thing like watching a movie, there is not really an objective, okay? I can watch a movie just because I have time and I don't have anything else to do. I can watch any crappy movie I want, okay? Other things are procedural. So when you are playing a game, there are some procedure that you have to follow to, to engage in the game. So when I play chess, uh, there is the procedure to select the player who starts first, okay? And typically what you do, you take two uh, pieces, black and white, you put them behind the hand, you say the left or right, and then the guy says, okay, I take this one, and then the play can start, okay? So in a way, this is this a this is a part of the of the of the game itself. Uh, as I said, procedure can be a very interesting part of the game in, in several games. For instance, in, in several games that you have, uh, uh, you may play like uh, dragons like uh, games. The procedure, the part where you build the, the character, it's a very big part of the of the thing. Or the introductory movie in uh, Starcraft for me. It was, it's one of the best part, uh, it's very interesting part of the game because it, after I see that movie, I really feel uh, as a space marine or whatever, and I'm going to fight uh, all the aliens coming up, okay? And then you have the rules. The rules are the ones that are written, that are, uh, you know, I try to do something, I can do it, okay? I try to jump in a certain situation, I'm, I'm married in the water, I try to jump, I cannot jump, okay? You cannot jump there, you can do this, you cannot do that, okay? There, there, two levels of, uh, of, of things. And obviously, what you have along the way, also Federico mentioned that yesterday, you have resources, okay? You have resources. So, the thing is, what is resources? It's those things that uh, might have a high value inside the games, like, uh, and that you can use to make the game, uh, to create a different emotion in the game. So, if you make uh, a shoot -a up Okay? and you put ammo everywhere, and you have hundreds, thousands of ammo, then you create a certain dynamics, a certain feelings. If I put a, lot, a little bit of ammo and a lot, a lot of enemies, to, then the feeling is completely different. So I can manage resources uh, to change the game. And most of the games, they have such resources. Okay? So for instance, if you ever played Space Invaders, okay, the guy with the aliens that coming out and uh, coming down, what are the resources, in your opinion? Do you have any clue about what are the resources there? Mm -hmm. There are the defense blocks. Defense blocks are resources. Also, there is an inner resource that you cannot shoot two, 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 several, uh, several bullets, but if you shoot them two or three, then you are done. Yeah, two. And that's, uh, that's basically your source, okay? You cannot do two, two, and then you are uh, finish your resource until they, 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 they kill somebody. All, this, all these things that, that you put together, the fact that you have an objective, the fact that you have uh, some resources, that you have rules and procedure, uh, create conflicts, okay? So it's really interesting that uh, when you are putting together a game, you are putting together a conflict. So you create, uh, artificially create, uh, some situation that is not achievable. So typical example, every book has the same example, it's golf, okay? If you consider everything from here above, uh, as elements, uh, so we have the player, okay, we have the player, we have the goal, so put the, the balls inside the, the hole, uh, we have rules and procedures, then I can do something like this, I cannot touch the ball, whatever, there are rules. And then uh, I have resources, typical resources, I have to have a uh, few strikes as possible, okay? The interesting point is that uh, if I consider only the objective per se, it's very easy. Uh, if you ask me, uh, can you put this ball inside that hole down there? I can take the ball, I can bring the ball there and put it inside the hole, okay? But then I decide, artificially decide, that that is too simple. Then I put some rules that you have to use a stick, and then I have to do some procedure, and then I have to do it in the least uh, number of moves possible. So I artificially create what's a conflict. 
I want to do something, but it's difficult. Okay? It is difficult. How much is difficult? Well, it's interesting because uh, then, well, you can, you can increase or decrease the level of difficulty. But the fact uh, that uh, I'm, uh, um, I, I want to do that, you also <coughs> don't do the, the level of my engagement. So if you give me a, a certain objective, with certain rules, and I still want to do that, and I really want to do that, and I'm engaged, you create a game, great game because I really want to go through that conflict. Okay? Uh, I might not want to that go through that conflict. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, I practice karate. A karate is a certain uh, way, style of uh, fighting. I, I, I can, I'm, I'm very happy to fight in the karate style. I'm not really happy to, uh, to fight in the boxing style. I don't like the conflict it creates, for instance. That's my, in, my, in my own case. So I would not be engaged, really engaged in boxing, but I'm really engaged in karate. Okay? And that's basically, uh, it's a very important thing. Uh, these elements can be combined in a very weird way. We are going to see some examples uh, during the course. So I know that this will sound weird and I'll probably cut this out, but uh, if anybody can get offended by uh, sexual audio content, you should leave the room now. Okay? Are there any minors here? No, because yesterday there was a minor inside the room. Okay, we call ourselves Milano Polini Game Collective just because we mocked the, the Copenhagen Game Collective that is from IDU. And uh, they developed uh, their, uh, their design school with the computer scientists and they are very experimental in some games. They are not <laughs> games that you can find around and buy, but some games are really really particular, so to say. <laughs> this is one of the games. Okay. There is also a presentation on in my website. That's the inside of the, the IDU. So it's a, it's a game that is played with the two uh, remote. And the, well, the goal, the objective is actually, you can imagine what is the objective. <laughs> Uh, well, the constraint is that uh, you cannot go asynchronous in that, uh, but you, everybody has to go sync in sync. Then you can play in four, two couples again, two couples, one couple again, one couple comes first, obviously. And I will delete everything. <laughs> uh, this is the link. But it's very special. Okay? If you think about it, there is a goal, there is a rule, there are players, what even personality you can imagine, you can be really engaged. How do we spawn funny the guy? Look at the guy. <laughs> and then the idea is that, uh, well, one of the things is that you, you have, when you play two, you have to make the other one, let's say, reach the, the thing first. Okay. You can download it. Uh, yes, it's actually a real game, and uh, you can actually play on the night. It's a very nice game, actually. But, well, I didn't thought about that, but in one of the workshops I will bring it so that we can check it. Next time I will bring another one, another, 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 another uh, very well, disturbing game, the one from Luca. But uh, I have to reboot in Windows, and this one doesn't have Windows, so I will show you another game that is really, really made during a game set, a uh, game, a uh, game um, jam that's really weird. But very interesting. Uh, I mean, the gameplay is very interesting. This is another one. It's called Battle. Brutal and Fair Tactics. The idea is very simple. You take a computer, a uh, PC, and then you have your, and then you have the controllers, and then basically on the screen it, it comes out with uh, some instruction. You, you say, you know, say. <laughs> so you have to use more. Uh, so. It gives you instruction. That this is interesting because the computer is not keeping the rules. Okay, they can do whatever they like. Okay, they have to move slow. They have to move slow to reach the buttons. Okay, and then you have to keep the button down for seven seconds. So everything is is okay to do it. So you can push the guy, move the guy, and whatever. These are all experimental games. 
that you might you might have to run, you might have to do the push-ups, whatever. It's really interesting because the rule system is kept by the players. Okay. If you ask me, keep seven seconds down, I take this, I don't do push-ups, I don't run, I do move slow. But actually the rule system is kept by the it's kept by the, the players. We can try it, but we can download it and try it. Maybe one of the well, next things. Uh, in all this stuff that is the, the game system, it's, there, is really, uh, there is really something that is in there. That is the boundaries and the outcome. Okay. Well, first of all, the outcome is the most important thing. Uh, the outcome, generally speaking, must be uncertain. <laughs> otherwise, you don't play. Okay. If you talk to board game designers like Spartacum, actually there are two or three talks on, on, the, on the YouTube webpage, uh, what he always says, he says uh, that if you want to do a very good game, it should be a game where if you lose, you have the perception that you lose, uh, but just for because you were unlucky at some point. You know, not because you were really bad. You know, it's not like uh, when I play Battlefield 3, I always lose and I really feel crappy. It's something like uh, uh, I could have done it. Uh, you know, at that point, if uh, you know the dice roll differently, I could have done it. That's the best, the best game possible. And actually, one of the best games is uh, games like Super Mario Kart, where basically the artificial intelligence behind the game, it's always, uh, it's always done, it's always um, set up to make you in, uh, in difficulty, give you difficulty, and it's always uncertain. The, the outcome is always uncertain. It's really difficult. I mean, take Mario Kart and take F1, okay? And you play F1 with a friend. If the friend is very good, there is no way you're going to win. In Mario Kart, whatever happens, you are always down there. It's actually the same principle. It's, appli uh, it's applied a little bit in Razzle. If you play Razzle, you have three rounds. The first round, yes, you play, you can win, but the amount of points you do is much lower, generally speaking, than the third one. You can still go, uh, there, it's really rare, if you arrive at the third round in Razzle and you don't think, I can do it. Okay? Because the amount of points, uh, the difference between you and, and the adversary is not that big. And it's basically studied like that, because otherwise, you know, it's like, uh, uh, it's like in soccer. Uh, you have uh, you, one of the cup matches, and the first, uh, the first match was won 6-0, and the other one, the, the second one, you really don't care, because whatever happens, it cannot be done. Okay? Uh, the other subtle thing is the boundaries. So uh, the game creates a circle and a kind of uh, environment where there are boundaries. And typically, you don't cross the boundaries between the game and the reality. And when you do that, it really becomes hard. Okay? It really becomes hard. Uh, typical thing is that uh, I don't know. I play with Federico. Federico beats me up in uh, Battlefield or whatever game I play, and I go out and I say I don't talk to you anymore. Possible. It's really weird. It's really yeah, it's possible, but it's really weird, right? And uh, I, I I went to some uh, there were some I think it was not the Games Week, but it was uh, Modern Play. We went there. And there was this called the tournament tournament, and basically people fight and say shout at each other, and they were almost getting, uh, you know, getting into a physical fight, and it was really, the people was uh, astonished, which is really nice, because the people playing, they were killing each other with the bazookas and uh, the shotguns, but then suddenly when they said, you know, you can do like that, everybody became like this. It was okay to kill everybody in the game, but actually, it, as soon as something get out of the boundaries, that was really weird. Uh, there are several other cases. One of the cases I liked it was from the last year. It was this one. So at some point when there was the election, the uh, Republican and uh, Democratic election, some Republican says you cannot vote for that Democrat woman because uh, at night uh, she plays World of Warcraft and she's an orc going around and slaying people. So and it was really it was literally something about you know you know. At night, she goes out, she becomes green, and she slays people. Why you want to vote for her? And there is all, all a rant about this. Uh, I, I took out some of this. Uh, actually, the Democrat was, uh, was uh, basically won the election, so basically more people play war, war, uh, war than, than the other ones. But, you know, probably everybody was inside, so probably the other ones were elves and stuff. Uh, another thing is was this it was this case. It's uh, I, I usually put it. Every time here, uh, it's it's a really 
you can find the video online. It's, uh, it's basically the story of the mind is it's, uh, it's, all, it's also WoW. And so basically what happens is that uh, a player in WoW dies. A player dies. Uh, then the, the other, the guild, decide to make the funeral inside the game. And while they are doing the funeral inside the game, I don't discuss this, I, I don't want to comment on this. But while they are doing the funeral, Another guild decide to, to have a raid and to destroy completely destroy the guild. So in a way, the, the reality and the game are missing. Okay. So from one point, one point is, my God, there was one of our friends died in the real world, and we were doing the funeral in the fake world. And the other one says, yes, but in the fake world, I can do whatever. It was allowed in the fake world. Okay. It would be really weird to go to a funeral and. and keep people that are attending funeral in real world. But in WoW it's okay. So if you go around and, and there is the link of the, of the movie. And there are all the rant that, that they did about this. And it's really interesting because you have this uh, can you can you can you comment on this? Is it true? Is it bad or it's okay to do that? And that's why I say uh, it's really uh, something that you don't want to mix. Uh, all we see, uh, all these elements that we have seen are called formal elements, and we are going to be deep into this uh, uh, in one of in the next lectures. Uh, and that's the elements that all the games share and what make up the essence of the games. Why we want to know them, and why we want to, for instance, categorize all the mechanics and categorize all the uh, kind of have a feeling of what are all the possible options and all the possible elements? Well, because, for instance, you can build up a game, try to be experimental by building up a game that has none or one, it has not one of the characteristics. For instance, the game that uh, Federico showed yesterday, it doesn't have an objective. Okay? You can still stay, say, you, can, you might still say that, uh, you know, WoW doesn't have a real objective, but still you have a, a global objective that is uh, uh, to uh, level up, to become the god of uh, the Lord or Asnard or whatever. Uh, it's really interesting, uh, for you, it's, you didn't see this, but there was a moment in time where people really wanted to have an open world. So it was really, uh, when we played, when we played in the game in the 80s, uh, with the Ultima series, the world was not, was not really open, you could not, not do everything you wanted in the world, okay? Because we had limited memory and stuff like this. At some point, uh, the first open world uh, uh, scenarios came up, uh, and uh, the interesting part was that, for instance, immediately it was clear that you still needed an objective in an open world, otherwise you go around and you don't know what to do. Okay? You eliminate the objective, you have a, a, a very experimental game, like the one which, uh, that we have seen. Uh, as I said, you can, for instance, eliminate the boundaries between the game, <coughs> the game and the artificial game and the physical game, like the, the guys in Copenhagen did, uh, did or the Joseph and Jaws do, uh, did in that game, and then you have a, another spe special game. Okay, so they, even if this appears to be a kind of uh, you know academic approach, still the fact that you know exactly what are the parts helps you to say if I want to do something like this, I could take out this part. What happens if I do this? Okay, that's one of the options. So uh, what happens is that the formal elements provide the structure. But they are static, as we see. Uh, you can you put <coughs> everything together to have uh, something that uh, allows you, the player to emotionally connect uh, with the game and to have the sense of engagement. And actually, you can take it's really interesting back because there is a part that the elements you have seen they are completely static, and you can have two games that have the same elements, basically almost the same dynamics, and they're completely different reception from the. Uh, from the from the players. So this is one. Just to have an, an, an example. The mechanic is the mechanic everybody knows. The objective is more or less the same, make things explode more or less. It might be difficult so you have to do complex stuff to do it. Several people play this game. <coughs> but not as many as this one. Right? Hey guys, what's up? John, I'm going to go by 
So now everybody knows it. So originally, more or less, it's the same. Actually, you uh, you actually you actually you actually made almost the same stuff. There is something extra, not in those elements, that makes it much more attractive here. The character are much better. Even the sounds are really nice, even in the first one. It's really interesting. One, one of the things is, for instance, let's take FPS, OK? FPS, uh, first person shooter. What, they, what do you do in first person shooter? You go out and you kill stuff. And the action you do, the action you perform, is typically shoot something into something, OK? Uh, you have destructible worlds, like the one in Battlefield. You have undestructible worlds, like the, the COD. But basically, you have this action. Then, suddenly, you change something in the game, and you obtain something completely different. This is one of the uh, most recent games. Uh, I think it's a game It's amazing. It's uh, in, on PS3. The idea is very simple. Well, you have to, well, there is a sad story underlying it. There is the kid that has, uh, died, uh, his mother died. Uh, the mother was usually doing uh, paintings that he never, she never finished. And there is this, this painting of a swan that she never finished. So one, at, one point, at some point, he, he wakes up, he doesn't find the, the swan in the painting, and he looks for the swan. The world is completely white. The only thing that he can do is uh, to shoot, uh, well, in the first part, he should do shoot ink. And basically, with a mechanism that is the same as any FPS, you create a completely different field. It's amazing. It's, ama it's really amazing. I have, to bring, I have to dismount my PlayStation 3 to, to bring it to you, but uh, I think it's worth playing it once at least. And it's really interesting because here uh, you may say, OK, I don't see any conflict, for instance, right? But there is a kind of a conflict in the sense that if you go into, into the closed environment and you start shooting everything around, everything becomes black and you still, don't, uh, you still cannot see the exit or the way out. So the point here is that uh, uh, in a, even in this small part, then there are labyrinths and stuff, like other stuff, but even in this small part, you have a kind of a conflict between what you can do, your goal, find the road, what you can do. You have unlimited resources, but actually you cannot use them all. Because if you paint everything black, you have the opposite problem. So you have to find the right balance between white and black to find the way out. And, uh, and this is quite famous, actually. And if you like game, you should have knew it before I show you. I show it to you. I find it really, really interesting. So you see, this one. Uh, if you think about this, it's actually to, to, to do it. It's actually almost easier than the average FPS because everything you don't have meshes. Everything is white or everything is black. And actually, you take the mesh of the, of the splash, you create several uh, meshes of the splash, and you start putting all around. That's a quite, uh, technically speaking, it's quite, e it's quite easier uh, than, uh, you know, average FPS with a huge amount of texture and stuff like this. But the idea, I think, is brilliant. Another game you should play is uh, Limbo, that has, it's all in black and white, and actually it was interesting to say, to, to, to have them. And uh, in an interview, there was the, uh, them talking and said, you know, it's black and white. Yeah, when you make it black and white, thinking, you know, I like black and white movies and whatever, things play like in the other game that we talked this guy yesterday. And the thing is that uh, they say we made it black and white because, uh, because we were not able to build the color and engine in color. So uh, from a limitation, it was, uh, it was a, a, a really great game for those born. So uh, how do you do? How do you engage the player? How do you create this uh, this uh, this engagement? The fact that uh, in, a way, in a way you see a game and you want really to play. Well, there are two things. First of all, as uh, anticipated, and we are going through this uh, uh, again, uh, you have to give the the, uh, the uh, right amount of challenge. So, for instance, an example here. Well. And you have to keep the, the as we've seen yesterday, you have to keep the player in the flow. 
Uh, one example for me is that I would never play chess again against a master, a chess master, because there is no way I'm going to win, so I'm not really interested in that. Or I never play very difficult games, okay? If, I, if the game is too difficult for me from the start, it's really difficult for me. I, I really, I, I, I say, okay, no. Uh, one of the things that's interesting, in several cases, is the, the premises. Okay, so for instance, uh, what is the premise? Uh, would you accept uh, to play a game that uh, your role is to kill animals all around? I uh, really don't. Uh, do you think that, uh, uh, do you like to become a king a lot of the uh, rain? Yes, uh, yes, this I like. Or if you play, if you play Monopoly, what is the premise of Monopoly? Well, it's really interesting. You are basically to destroy the opponents, basically taking all the money. So it's uh, really interesting as, a, as an, an, an element. Another element that you can use is the character. So you have characters that are basically uh, characters that are basically uh, very famous, like Super Mario or uh, other characters, uh, well-known characters. One of the things is the story, and this is there is a lot of debate in, in games whether the story is important or not. There are games where the story is extremely important. Uh, if you play the Heavy Rain, if you play the Last of Us, if you play several stories. Actually, I, I never played out. Uh, uh, well, I played at some fair. I, I didn't play out. I have the, the, the Xbox, if you wonder. Uh, but for instance, for some of the players I know, the story underlying Halo is really clear. For me, it's not, more or less. Okay, so it's really interesting. There are several books that are whether it's it's the story important or not. One of the points I read in one one book I read recently. Uh, it's called Why Video Games Matter, is that uh, the story per se, uh, the debate is broken, completely broken if you go multiplayer. There is no way that you are going to use story, the story is important in multiplayer, so you really don't bother. I will show you some of the, uh, well, I will briefly show you because we are almost at the end, some examples. Well, you didn't play this one, but you should, have, uh, you should uh, go online and try to find it, uh, you can find it for free. This is Alone in the Dark, the original one, actually it's the second one. But here the story was, uh, the, the feeling uh, of the story was amazing. You have to save a, a small kid from this house. And everything, all the engagement, all the feeling, everything was basically based on the visual perception, which was basically made by screens. It was painting. It was painting plus something that was moving on the paint. So and every time you move in a certain position, they would change the background. So it was only this one was 3D. And everything was done by the, by the, by the music. It was really scary. Okay. So the first three residents in the park? More or less, yes. More or less, yes, yes, yes. I, uh, yes. Suddenly, I, I remember the, me trying to save the game of the typewriter that was very, very boring in the first one, but then, yes, yes. But this one was first, and it was a French company. So when you were you were hurt or you were doing some stuff, you would, which is taken back again in uh, if you played um, Dead Space, for instance, the first one. Well, when you had, for instance, another one where you had the, the character that was uh, the feeling it was more about the character is Max Payne, obviously. And it's also the first one that uses the comic book like uh, intermission of the of the thing. And that's the story of uh, a major issue here. And then I put a, limit, a, limit, a, a small thing about The Last of Us. That's uh, because it's considered that when they told you about all the, all the reviews, said the, the story and the feeling is very, 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 uh, it's, it's very, it's incredible. And actually, it is. I, I, I like it more or less. If you have the PlayStation, you should also try or you should also check out the videos from Aviary, uh, for instance. Um, when he, he went out, uh, the guys from Milestone came out, came here, and for instance, he, explained, he discussed all the stuff about this, about why he died again. It was almost a movie, actually. This one is still. I have to say, it's really nice. 
Naughty Dogs is uh, well. If you check out online, Naughty Dogs, artificial intelligence, etc., you can find many pre several presentations about how they build the, the the artificial intelligence for the non-player character that uh, takes you around. And actually, they are probably considered the most advanced artificial intelligence for the companions you have in the adventure. They use a, so a sort of uh, list-like representation of the, uh, the world. So just to end, uh, when you are saying that, uh, when you are considering these, uh, these elements, these elements are studies. So the games are systems and uh, they are interrelated elements. As uh, we are going to see in next, uh, where all these elements, they have to be considered in a, as a whole, because the, these elements work together to form a complex whole, and the whole is greater than the sum of these parts. So if you consider Fragger, he has almost the same part as Angry Birds, but somehow uh, one has more successful, more engaging for players, okay? And what is the goal of the game designers is to uh, look at the game as a system and to work all around these elements. And actually to know the elements, also because they are a very so big source of inspiration, we are going to try to make uh, some, uh, uh, some uh, brainstorming examples, some uh, creative writing examples about this. Like, uh, could you, uh, for instance, write, uh, can, can you come up with an, an idea of a game uh, only with this element and that's it, okay? So it's very interesting because if you take the game, uh, you can think about, uh, start doing a creative uh, exercise just to say, what happens if I uh, eliminate this? Can I, can, I modify, can I modify the gameplay of a game just eliminating or modifying one of these aspects? Uh, this is the, the definition of a game that, uh, that's, um, that's given by rules of play. Uh, I will show you, I will post uh, a, a website. There is a website where there are all the 10, 20 definition of games depending on the several rules. Now, I wish to end with an exercise. So uh, then when the lecture ends, you can come here and play with this one. It's one of the uh, exercises that uh, it's a creative uh, exercise. So, what I did, I went online and took out the seven covers from the old Atari's, uh, Atari's, uh, Atari's games. Actually, some of the games are old Atari games, others are not. So I, I deleted the title. And the point here is that uh, I'm going to give you a print of this. Uh, you should go home and uh, for the next time, uh, well, we can collect them even on Friday so that it's quick. You should choose one of these cover, okay, and try to write the concept for the cover and the title of the game. So I could say, you know, uh, I can take this one and, uh, and call it, okay, one solution for this one is uh, Cooking Madness. Okay, I take the second one uh, from the top, Cooking Madness. You are a cook that uh, kills people and makes uh, food with it, okay? And uh, your game, your concept, your goal is this and this and this. Like the game concept you are going to write somehow at some point, but it's completely fictional and actually it's, uh, it's basically influenced by this one. I give you the cover, you write the game, okay? It's a creative game. Uh, I really wish to, um, don't send it by email, uh, you can play, play, play a sheet of paper and, and just write it there. Uh, create a fake name. If you don't want to put the name, create a fake name, like, uh, you know, XYZ2, okay? That's okay for me. Uh, then you keep, the, game, you keep the, the, the screen name for the whole course if we have something anonymous to have, so that uh, you really don't feel that they will say, oh my god, this description is crap, you don't really feel that it's false me, they're, they're looking at me. Nobody knows anybody. 